CV Fiber Governing Board meeting to order. Um, are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Uh, yeah, I noted that you had approval of the October 13th meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, those have already been approved. Um, so I think maybe you meant the October 20th meeting minutes. Yes, yes. I can I can do that. We can do that instead. So, so October 20th instead. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> I'd also like to move up um, because Tim has a a timing issue, although I don't see him. Tim said he has a timing issue. He has to leave um, a little early. I was going to move the project manager's report up after the consent agenda. Okay. And okay. Any other additions or changes? So this this says we go to eight. I I don't really. I'm looking at these agenda items. I don't really feel like we're going to hit eight o'clock tonight. But don't we'll curse see. it, Jeremy. All right. Well, sorry. <laughs> E eternal it's going to go super long. All right. All right. Uh, public comment. Any comments on items that are not on the agenda? Okay. Hearing none. Uh, the consent agenda. So I move that we approve all of the items on the consent agenda, which includes the uh, October 20th meeting minutes as presented and the payment of bills for the clerk for two months that I sent. Um, I sent you the, the second invoice um, just a few minutes ago and for our project manager, Tim. Frank Moore second. second. Okay, Siobhan, he beat you. I heard Frank first. He did, he did. <laughs> Siobhan, you look too comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fr Fr Frank is poised to get things done. Yes. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> any further discussion? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed abstentions or folks wanting to take a roll call? The ayes have it. Motion passes. Thank you for that. Uh, the next agenda item is for um, this is a statutory obligation for us to um, hear from any of the municipalities that have questions Jeremy? about the. Yes. Did you move Tim up to this after the consent agenda? Oh, yep. You're right, Siobhan. Thank you yep. very much. Tim, in, in the interest of making sure that you don't get put on too late or whatever, and I know you have other things to do, um, could we do the project manager's report right now? Sure. Thank you. Let me get to my notes. So let's see. Um, Things that uh, I've been working on, I don't necessarily, as you put in the agenda, I don't think there's any um, decisions that need to be made, but give you an update on what I've been up to. Um, I did work on the, uh, the specifications for the marketing materials and the logo design, and we have kind of three separate tracks going there um, with uh, potential providers for those materials, enhancements and such. Um, I did send out a, uh, some initial logo designs. However, after consulting some experts, um, Chuck in particular, uh, he thought that we might be better served to maybe go to someone that um, specifically focuses in that area. So I appreciate everyone's feedback. However, I think we're going to um, kind of up that uh, to working with a company um, that uh, specializes in that. So I've been working with them a little bit or, or getting ready to work with them. Uh, I have been uh, beginning to fill in the sections for the VITA application and working with uh, Ying Young as far as what the expectations are there. Um, so I've been starting to work on drafting some language and pulling together those requirements for the uh, VITA application when that comes to fruition. Also uh, worked with Waitsfield Champlain Valley Telecom and EC Fiber to pin down Kind of the terms for the um, respective Duxbury potential projects and the Roxbury project based Moortown. on, or excuse me, Moortown, Moortown, sorry, Moortown, not Duxbury, uh, Moortown um, for those uh, respective areas uh, based on the favorable outcome, uh, the public service department. I did uh, work on drafting the annual report that will be uh, discussed this evening. Um, 
did some research on the kind of uh, opportunity with the USDA Community Connections grants and kind of what the stipulations and where that might be a fit or not for um, for uh, CV fiber and have also uh, initialized the um, kind of laying the groundwork with uh, COS systems for the demand aggregation software kickoff and getting things underway in working with them as well. Uh, I think those are the my my list of activities that have been uh, taking my time. So does anybody have any questions for Tim? Okay. Thanks very much, Tim. Appreciate it. Um, mm -hmm. So moving on to the next item, the budget and annual report hearing and approval. So again, this is our this is a statutory obligation that we provide the budget and the annual report to all of our towns and then ask for their feedback. And sometimes that feedback comes from the elected officials in those towns. Sometimes that feedback comes from, you know, some of us here. So if does anyone have any feedback that they've received, Chuck? Uh, actually, that is slightly different than feedback we received. Um, because we have not distributed this, there's a portion in this where it invited people to attend our November 10th standard meeting uh, in order to provide said feedback. Uh, I would like to make a motion um, to have that, have Tim update that to our next meeting date before we distribute it. It's already been distributed. Oh, okay, great. Well, then I guess if people have uh, have seen it, that's great. <laughs> yeah, so 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 this what this draft um, um, so that we would meet the statutory obligations, we took the draft annual report. I should say I took the draft annual report that Tim had put together, um, made a couple edits, sent it around to all the municipalities. Um, it, and I, I haven't heard anything specific. I don't know if anybody else has heard anything specific. I, I don't think last year we heard anything other than, you know, asking for some clarification about something or the other. But um, I would be happy to take any of your feedback on the annual report. And I apologize for the lateness. I should have CC'd all of you on that as well. <clears throat> Not just the, the town clerks and mayoral people in the area. But I don't, I don't think. Um, I don't think that there's anything too surprising in there. At least there, there shouldn't be. So um, we can, uh, we still do have time. We, we can still delay this if we wanted to solicit some more, um, some more feedback. If you wanted to like, do some additional outreach or chew on this a bit more, we still have the time to, um, we don't have to approve this right now, I guess what I'm saying. So this is kind of to itch that statute or scratch that statutory itch and um, make sure that we held the hearing. But um, if there's any additional feedback, if you want to hold off, we can push this off to the next meeting. I think we just have to have the budget passed by the end of the year. So any any thoughts either way? Chuck, would you still like to like to sit on this for a week or two or a month? No, I, it's already been through um, a number of revisions through the communications committee. Um, I think most people had an opportunity to weigh in on it and we were pretty happy with it. Uh, I think the, the date was my only concern and, and if it's already been distributed to that particular audience, then that doesn't matter. So uh, I'm good with it. Okay, Alan. Jeremy, does this report get sent to town clerks as well with the invitation to have it printed in the town report if the town clerk has desire to do so? That, that is typically what, what we've seen in the past. Um, because all the towns are members of this district, um, not all towns choose to do this, but I know Berlin, for example, does. I know Barry City does. Um, but yeah, if Worcester's putting together their, um, their annual report, you know, attaching these three pages, I think, makes a lot of sense. Um, and they could take it as is, or they can reformat it somewhat. Um, but I think that's, I think that's reasonable. Yeah, I think it might be a good idea because 
I think the way that most people are getting information about our work is either through the updates on Front Porch Forum or when they go to town meeting or get their town report. If there's something in there, they'll, they'll read it. And I, I seem to remember last year, there wasn't anything in our town reports. So I'm, I've got to figure out, I'll, I'll talk with my town member to see if I can get some space in the, in the town report. But I, I think most, most townspeople read their town reports. So it, since this is a report of the past year, we have a good reason to be there. And I think people would like to like to have it. Thanks. So yeah, so uh, one of the things that once we approve this, form, formally approve it, I'll take off the draft language and I will send it out to the entire distribution list. And I'll, I'll, I can include a note saying, you know, please feel free to include this in, in your, you know, in your town's annual report. But I think doing that outreach individually, so going and talking to Katie is going to be a good idea to make sure um, that something actually happens with it. Uh, so uh, yeah. David, then Chuck. So I got an email today from Town of Calus wanting to know when am I, when are they going to get their one page summary of CV fiber activities for the town report? So Calus has a one page limit on uh, organization reports. So I will extract from this report and provide that to the town by, I think they want it in two weeks. Okay. Yeah. So, that, and that's, yeah, depending on the town, I know Berlin has their um, kind of deliverables. Um, Deliverables are due like the first week of January. So depending on the town, it's it's going to be worth reaching out to your clerk and finding out the best way and the format and the, any length requirements. Okay, Chuck? Uh, I was actually going to point out the same thing as David. Uh, Moortown also requested a one pager last year uh, and will certainly do so again because the books are a little more expensive to print. Uh, that said, uh, they were willing at least to we, have, we usually have a table of addendum material and and you know uh, the charity materials of charities we might give to and, and so forth. Uh, so we did print out the full um, uh, uh, report for that table and indicated in the town report that it would be available both there and at the town office uh, leading up to town meeting day. So that might be a good uh, that might be a good option should you be space constrained and then whichever so whoever ends up writing that one pager if that's you david if you could send that to the rest of the board then so then we can kind of steal your work or chuck if you're going to do that whoever's going to do that i see tim you have your hand up uh, yeah i'm i'm happy to take that on and do a uh, consolidated one pager and send that out great perfect and then we can all sort of distribute that out to the town clerks as we need to. So I'm gonna assume that we'll approve this and we can send, we'll send both copies, the actual approved full budget and the actual approved annual report and then the one pager for kind of broader distribution. Sound like a plan? Ahead, so Javon. I, can, can I move approval of the budget and annual report and the one pager so that we can have a discussion about them and then act on it or is it premature to do that I, i'm going to second that and i'm going to say let's, I, I let's go that. ahead okay <laughs> yeah. all right all right so so, so we've talked so what about else would like so, okay could that be rephrased just a little bit in the form of a motion for the minutes <laughs> i move that oh. we approve the budget and annual report that have been provided and for Tim Shea to create a one pager con con condensed version of the annual report for distribution in the town warnings. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, anything else that folks want to say about this? Any feedback on the report or the budget? I think we, I think- I have a question, Jerry, budget, if we, I may. Yeah, go for it, Jerry. Thanks. Uh, just, just clarification. Uh, what's and I may have missed this somewhere else, but there's the revenues. There's new customer deposits and there's data revenue. W what are those line items? What's the difference? Okay, so let me bring that budget up. So, uh, new customer deposits. This is going to be the money that folks put down for starting service. Data revenue is revenue from internet service. Phone revenue is from them 
uh, getting phone service from us, which is essentially a, a pass through for a, a voice over IP solution. Okay, so the data revenue is the in internet internet revenue. Right, and then there, we expect that there's a certain percentage of folks who will also want phone service, and we will <coughs> offer that, right. and we will offer the the customer um, the customer equipment um, to allow them to to have that voice over IP solution over their fiber connection. Thank you very much. You're welcome, Alan. Uh, Jeremy, if if I could suggest a technical correction to Shaban's motion. I don't think we want to use the phrase town warning in our in our motion. It's the town report that we want the information in. The town warning is the well, you know this as well as anybody, Jeremy. It's it's the official announcement of motions uh, of things that will come up for consideration for the town to vote on a town meeting. And I don't think we want to create the impression that we're going to be asking people to vote on things, which you know could possibly lead I to something if they see it. So I accept that as a friendly amendment. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That sounds good. I I just worry I, about I, I, kind of, I just worry about stuff like that. Fair enough. Thanks for that, Alan. Yep. Yeah. It's well, one of those things I I knew what she meant, and I yeah that it would have been uh, better to phrase the other way. And Jeremy, you I assume you you have that revised in the motions there. Okay. Anything yep. else on um, anything else on uh, annual report budget uh, or Tim doing the one pager. Okay, hearing nothing else, uh, let's vote. Uh, Michael, unmute first. Um, the, the last point about revenues um, kind of assumes that CV Fiber will be the IS. Is that in, in our budget to be the ISP or to work with an ISP? Well, we, we still get the revenues and then we pay for whatever it's going to cost to actually serve that. Then you have the um, you have those costs down below. ISP operations is down in the expenses row. It's uh, 28. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not looking at the document yeah so so there is a there is an expense that so we take this money in the way the budgeting has to work as a municipality is we still have we have to track all of the money that's coming in in whatever form so loan proceeds grants and then this revenue even if because it's going to be coming into us we would then be paying um <clears throat> you know our contracted isp or whatever and and perhaps we're going to have some sort of different contractual agreement down the road and it looks different than that. This is this is what we've talked about as being the, the model that we're proceeding with. So um, we can certainly change things or shift things around. I think the underlying um, orders of magnitude for costs and uh, revenues though, are, it should be, that, that should be basically right. Thank you. Sure. Anything else? Okay. Let's go. Uh, let's go to vote. Uh, all those in favor of approving the budget annual report and instructing Tim to do the one pager, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed uh, abstentions or folks who want to do a roll call? Okay, motion passes unanimously. Thanks, everybody. Uh, moving on to the finance report. Um, I sent you the via CCU bank transactions. There shouldn't really be anything too surprising in there. This, uh, the most recent, you know, the most recent thing of any interest is, you know, Jeremy Matt depositing the $150 check on the 14th. <laughs> Otherwise, we're sitting on the uh, a fairly big portion of the the CARES Act funds from the, the hundred thousand dollar grant. Um, so we just we spent an additional we approved ten thousand three hundred dollars in our um, uh, consent agenda earlier tonight. So this number you can imagine going down by ten thousand three hundred as well. I have a Again, question. Any, yeah, go for it. Um, 
the bottom line there before the expenses today is that what's left? Nineteen thousand and no. Look at the top. It's where it says okay. current balance. It's on the right in the first page, very top. Uh, okay, okay. Do we have a date by which that has to be spent? December thirtieth. So you, so if you, yeah, if you just said anything else, you were muted. I saw you sort of le lean back and. Uh, that's what I thought. That that's the, like the gulp in my throat. Because even the state is scrambling about December thirty first. Yeah. So if we are not going to spend some of that money, we have to give it back. Ugh. So I'll. So and it's very likely that we won't spend it down to the exact dollar, and that maybe we will. But if we don't, we will be writing a check back to the state. Or you know, having them, or, you know, doing an ACH or something, <laughs> to uh, have them claw that back and then plow it back into other things that the legislature has, uh, you know, has in the wings ready to go. Okay. Michael, I saw you had your your hand up. Yeah, we should we should confirm whether the date is December twentieth or December thirtieth. Those are the two dates that the legislature has used and the department has used. December 20th was in case they thought the money wouldn't be spent, they would have 10 days in which to get it redistributed to other agencies that could spend it rapidly, like human services or something like that. So I, I don't know whether that applies to our particular grant or not. But should confirm that. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna pull up the I'm gonna pull it up right now. This is worth this is worth nailing down here rather than kicking it off later. Uh, so we have to re provide short reports on the 30th of each month. Um, so December 15th, we will get the final $10,000 if we uh, if we need it. Um, yeah, I'm just looking for dates okay uh, I think this is it unless otherwise authorized by the Commissioner of Finance and Management, any monies appropriated from the CRF shall revert to the CRF to the, the extent that they have not been expended by December 20th, 2020 to enable reallocation. Thank you, Michael. I'm gonna paste that back into the chat. Oops. So that, okay, it's not going to let me, not gonna let me paste in the chat, whatever, but I think you get the, you get the sense of it. So yeah, it will revert back to that fund at the state of Vermont on the 20th. So we get a check, so, it's funny, we get a check on the 15th and then we have to hand it back if we don't right. spend so it on the, on the 20th. Further clarification, I've been told that if we know we can spend it by the 30th, we do not have to revert it on the 20th, but that right. is, the, if money's gonna be reverted, it has to be on the 20th. They, as long as it's all expended by the 30th, they're fine. Right. If we don't think we can spend it by the 30th. We have to turn it back in by the 20th. Right. Which is interesting because if, you know if they're dispersing us, you know, an additional $10,000 on the 15th. By the time that gets to the treasurer's office, the check is cut. It's going to be past the end of the year by the time, you know, I see it in the mailbox. That's well, that's so that's sort of typical of how it's been going. Yeah, I would very much like like to have this as a direct deposit, but I, as far as I know, they don't they don't support that. Maybe that's uh, Tim. Maybe would you follow up with Rob and see if we can um, set up a direct deposit, direct debit arrangement for these kind of time crunched uh, end of the year stuff? Will do. Thank you. All right. So, uh, good question. Um, all right, anything else on the finances? So for the bank transactions or anything else? <laughs> if you're talking, Frank, you're muted. 
Okay, you're talking to someone else. Okay. All right, so no real approvals needed there. So moving along, uh, I'm we did the project to managers. Myself. Okay, that's all right. Muttering obscenities at, at the bureaucracy. Uh, so Henry, I saw you had your, your hand up. Is this about the finance report or about the communications committee coming up next? Um, the finance, I was wondering, um, uh, Fred's been paid for the feasibility and, and the business plan. And has he been paid to update the feasibility and business plan for Duxbury and Roxbury? Is, okay. No, no, we've not contracted him to do that. And t maybe Tim, if you would reach back out to Fred and see if he'd be willing to add um, Duxbury and Washington to the feasibility study and just give us a quote about uh, not only how long or not only how much, but how long he expects it to take. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Henry, for that was a, definitely a, a dropped ball. And we have it in the we have it in the budget to do that. So that's part of that hundred thousand dollars, Michael. So in regards to that, um, have we just entered into an agreement with UC Fiber to do Washington? In which case, the study would be redundant. <laughs> We're not redundant, but but actually unnecessary. No. We haven't, David. Okay. David and Tim and Tim has been talking to EC Fiber. I mean, basically, he was splitting Washington down some ridge in Washington, in which part of it will be EC Fiber and the other part will be CD Fiber, and and um, that's what the discussion has been with them. So we'd have to point that out to Fred in our you know scope with Fred. We have to tell him where where the boundary is. Which, if Tim, you could find that out because there's a couple okay. of ridges in Williamstown, right? <laughs> Will do. I mean, in Washington, sorry, wrong time. Yep, I know what you meant. <laughs> okay, Okay. so um, anything else on finances through the end of the year? Okay, um, for this next one, um, it, it occurs to me that I, I should have offered all of the committees a chance to update. So um, if we could maybe just call this the committee update, but maybe we'll start with the communications committee, then go to business development. And then I don't think uh, policy committee has actually met, but we do have a, Phil had a kind of a wish list to take from there. So let's start with the communications committee, Chuck. Great, yeah, so last meeting, um, we mostly focused on two areas of activities, uh, one being the annual report um, and getting that in a state that you are seeing it now today. Um, and uh, the other talking about the marketing plans uh, and how we are going to go to market um, with, uh, with some of the CARES Act funding options we've been talking about and the grant funding options we've been talking about. Um, now that said, uh, at the time, the money had not come through yet. Um, open question there for me is to, uh, to David, I guess, as to whether that money has come through yet uh, for our proposals. But before I get to that, uh, we did essentially kind of talk about some things conceptually, but decide to table taking any action until we knew there was money to back up said actions. Um, the other thing to note is we do have some in-flight design work already going. Uh, and um, as Tim indicated, um, there uh, have been some materials produced, some great print materials, door hangers, things like that that go out. And, uh, a couple of really clever ones, actually, that I think people around here will appreciate. Uh, one, including a headline, is your internet slower than SAP? Uh, I, lo I just love that. Um, however, uh, the logo work, I thought, was not up to par. And so uh, I have actually helped Tim engage with a, an organization that does a lot of brand and identity work. Um, they're a very professional group of people who are also reasonably cost uh, effective because they're sort of a coalition of freelancers that do it together rather than a tried and true agency with a ton of overhead. Um, and so uh, I pulled them into the mix. Tim and they have ongoing discussions 
Uh, but right now we're still just kind of sitting on the hold button waiting to make sure we have the money to pay them. Uh, I'm getting the thumbs up from David. So what I'd like to go ahead and do is make a motion uh, for uh, a, a spend of up to $2,000 to come for that money to work on brand and identity. Is there a second? Second. second. I saw David Healy second that. So $2,000 for brand and identity. Okay. And that those funds are coming out of the second bucket of CARES Act funds. So just to be clear. Right. And it, it was indicated as one of the items we would proceed on in, in the request for funds. So it was clear it was part of a larger kind of marketing package that I think the, the total amount was 20,000. Is that right, David? Yeah, I don't have it in front of me, but I think you're right. Yeah. It, it was somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, so this would be allocating this portion of that uh, from which we would then move on to things like website redesign uh, and, and other things that are sort of dependent on this getting done first. Okay, any uh, other discussion on this or questions for Chuck? I guess uh, I have one. What does your timeline look like? So this is the first request. Are we going to need to meet next week or the week after so that we can kind of get the rest of the uh, the funding out the door? Unless we want to pre-approve a package, probably, um, though uh, I think the Business Development Committee is kind of running with some of the other aspects of it, particularly the canvassing project. Um, uh, but for the, uh, the website scope of work and the marketing print materials, uh, you know, if, if we want to go ahead and approve the full package right now, that would certainly streamline things. Uh, but note, uh, actually, let me let me ask Tim to weigh in because he's been managing that process on the on the RFPs. Tim, where are we on that? Yeah, so uh, we do have uh, two interested parties that would work together on the website and the marketing materials. So um, I think, yeah, kind of packaging them up as an approval for a not to exceed, which fits within the proposal that we sent to the to the public service department probably makes sense to get things moving. They, they've been teed up. They've already sent, you know, some ideas, but uh, um, and they've been notified that, you know, things are close, but I think, yeah, getting an approval tonight would would move things along quickly. So my, my question to the rest of you is, do you feel like you want to, uh, to approve the whole bucket and kind of let Tim and the communications committee um, kind of handle this and take it from here? Yes. Or would you rather me meet again yes. next week? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then, so we could, you know, be approving these things a bit more uh, onesie twosie. So, I say give it to him tonight. I was going to say, um, and I, I, I realize we need to get the money out the door, so uh, I'm, I don't want to hold things up, but I just want to make sure we're not running afoul of our own policies around doing RFPs over certain value contracts and that kind of thing. So I, th I think the $2,000 doesn't run afoul of that, but we should, yeah, I mean, if we have some, if we have a bigger, um, if we have a, a bigger bucket of money, we should probably be publishing an RFP and actually have a process of, of vetting those folks. You know, Jeremy, the other thing is you got this money for five weeks. How long can we delay? Well, we should, that's true, but we should at least have some sort of open process so that we, so that we get a public advertisement out there. So we know the folks that are interested, but maybe there's some other folks interested too. It can be a st streamlined process, but as a public entity, we do have to, at least well, and then we need to streamline it, but we need to move. Yeah. So, so let's, let's try to, uh, let's approve this then what's the not to exceed and what's the, uh, what, what's the deliverable that we had in the, the, gr the grant request. I also don't have it in front of me. So I don't have the amount in front of me. Uh, however, the scope was outreach and communications project. Uh, project helps build CV Fiber's ability to engage and communicate with the district and potential customers. It has three linked elements. When completed, they'll become a key part of our education and subscriber management efforts to serve telehealth needs, remote learners, and remote workers. Uh, and I, I can I can paste this for people as well. Um, provide the district with the necessary information to understand the needs for telehealth, remote learning, and remote work. 
Uh, we want to make sure the information collected will provide the needed guidance to the district to effectively meet these needs. Using this information, we'll incorporate it into an expanded and revamped CV Fiber website to better communicate our offering and needs. And the last element is to subscribe and purchase a software package that will assist us in managing our customer relationships, tracking who we've contacted, and combine this data with the identified needs. Okay, so for all of the outreach and communications assistance, which includes the canvassing and whatnot, that um, that amount was 60000 I don't know how you had broken that out or how you'd imagine breaking it out, but if you, if if I'm hearing that 20000 of that would go towards the work that you're talking about right now, Chuck, then I think that um, I will move that we... Um, I will move that we delegate responsibility to... Oh, what's the right way to put this? I move that we approve the expenditure so, of... So, uh, Jeremy, real quick, we do have a motion on the table, right? So are we now amending we... that emotion? Yeah, oh, I, I made the motion that's, for that's the $2,000. Um, can I just retract that motion in, in light of or, where we're going? Sure, if, if, that, if that makes sense. Okay, if, I everybody... retract my prior motion. Is that everybody amenable to that? Mm -hmm. No screaming. Okay. All right. So, do you do you want to make the motion then, Chuck, uh, with the the new scope and the new dollar amount, not to exceed? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just I'm trying to desperately find the full dollar amount here. Um, so bear with me just a moment. And David, if you happen to know how to get to it, that would be helpful if you could take a look as well. Yeah, the only number I have right handy is the 60k. Um, for all those tasks. And then we're actually, and looks like we're using $5,000 from the previous round as well plan, right. into that bucket. And, and so David, I guess the question I would have is um, based on the canvassing RFP, uh, how I wanna make sure that is a success. So uh, what, what amount of the funds need to be allocated for that? Um, Tim for COS, and and you know I would argue that those should be the things that we allocate money toward first, and use the remainder for the marketing activities because we'll be able to dial that I think in and out based on on exactly what we want to accomplish a bit more. I had set a the canvassing. I had set aside twenty thousand. And and then yeah, and COS to stand that up is uh, about. 5,000. Does that include the monthly fees through the end of the year? Well, this year, yes, but not next year. Okay, so we're at 25 out of 60,000. Um, I, 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 I thought I remember seeing a, a more broken down budget as we were kind of tossing this back and forth. Too. I did too. So, so tell you uh, what, Sean, okay, let's... So Given that, given given that uh, the amount we've already been talking about doesn't put us above the pool that now seems available, uh, I think we can just constrain it at that at that point. And and frankly, if there's an opportunity to spend some more for a good reason, we can always come back and and ask for it then. So uh, I make a motion uh, that the, the communications committee is allocated up to twenty thousand uh, dollars to spend on branded identity website revamp and other marketing collateral to be distributed to our communities. Second. Okay. <laughs> Moving things forward. Devon got that one. All right. So um, any other questions or comments about this motion? Looking to get this out the door. Lowry. What's the review? It, what's the review process like for some of this? Like I like I don't really have a problem from the expedition expediting of funds and everything else, but, you know, the messaging and the general trend and the whatever, it's not like I want to get into the weeds on detail either, but it'd be nice to see, have some in ball on this in terms of, you're just going to go off and start a new campaign and we as a board have just completely delegated authority. Right, to the communications committee, but go ahead, Chuck. My, my plan was that the communications committee would have to have uh, votes and agreement on anything we do, and then we would present a package back to the board 
um, in order to get approval on kind of the general themes and and some of the okay. uh, obviously the logo is something we should all feel pretty good about and and so I would want everybody to weigh in on stuff like that. So um, yeah, I'm definitely envisioning a, a okay. review coming back through the board. Okay. Okay. Oh, I mean, contingent. I mean, as long as that's like there, then I'm I'm kind of good. So. Okay. So real quick, Chuck, could you post? Um, what exactly you wanted to spend the money on because that was going by a little bit quick. Yeah, sure. And sorry about the cars driving by. <laughs> oh, good. All right. Uh, Lowry, you had your hand up before? Yeah, I just, I just was curious, what is the um, the policy uh, on the you know minimum or the maximum expenditure that doesn't require you know multiple bids? Or is this is this already triggered with twenty five thousand, and that, and we're assuming that there are going to be soliciting of multiple bids. Just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, so I I, I thought it was five thousand. I think that there there was a couple thresholds, um, but yeah, so I think bidding. We're certainly with twenty thousand. We're certainly hitting the threshold for bidding. So if there's if there's if we're going to be having twenty thousand dollars go out the door, then yes, there should be a process whereby we at least have some advertisement to the public, so other interested folks have a chance to weigh in. But I'm gonna I'm gonna count on the communications committee just to keep things moving moving forward rapidly. And Tim, I'll I'll count on you and respectively. <laughs> Sounds good. Yep. And we are breaking that twenty five up several different ways. So, but we'll do. Okay. Twenty we'll or twenty five. I, I, I moved 20 and that's what I'm putting in the text here. Okay. Yeah, it was 20. Okay. Any other questions? The other or 5K thoughts? was for uh, canvassing and that's the other 5K was for canvassing and that is yeah. going to be a separate approval sometime later. Yeah. And that's going to be bigger for, than five. Yeah. So canvassing ah, okay. was 20, 20K, $5,000 was for the COS software. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I missed that. Derp. Thank you. It's all good. Okay. Anything else on this request from Chuck and the communications committee? I did just put the, the text in the in the chat in case everybody wants to give it one last review or yeah, let's it. take a peek. Thank you very much, Chuck. Appreciate that. Okay, if everybody's ready to go with this, uh, all in favor of Chuck's motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions or folks who want a roll call. Excellent. Communications committee, you have it. Anything else? That's it from us, thank you. Okay. Business development, David. I believe you have some news. Sure, the, the, I'll cover a couple things here: the grant funding update and the business development. Um, we were notified you know, today or last night that we are. Well, around... David, what? Sorry, real quick. Grant funding update is the next um, agenda item. Correct, but I'll. So do cover. Want... Oh, Okay. Yeah. Yeah, let, let's let, let's move on to that because it all it's yeah. all connected. It's all connected. Okay. So we heard from the Department of Public Service the last night or this morning that we were approved for the, the round two funding that we put in there. Now, for those who are not familiar with what we put in, we put in money for the, communi the communications package, um, fiber to the premise in uh, Roxbury Northfield and fiber to the premise in Moortown. Um, they approved all of that. Whether we can spend the more town money is debatable, um, because uh, basically I'm well, I'm going to pretend that we still can do it, um, even though it may not happen. The EC fiber says they can do the Roxbury Northfield line that we asked them to do for us, and Tim has been negotiating with them on that. In the course of this, you folks missed the opportunity to rewrite this grant application five times. As each day, There's more than that. <laughs> yeah, each time they wanted us to add three other words to each section so that it was compliant with the, the legislation. And I tried to fight back saying that we put that in our original grant application. So, I mean, it wasn't like, but anyway, 
that's water over the dam. I tried to stay nice for the whole thing. And uh, so it was rewritten a lot. And poor Jeremy and myself had to go back and forth with the department at least at least a half dozen times. Um, then yesterday we heard from Rob saying that, oh, if you could do more fiber to the premise, we have more money. <laughs> and I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with that or what we should do with that, since it's unlikely that we can make it all happen this year anyway. The good news, I sent an email to Rebecca, which I can't remember her last name, at Congressman Welsh's office this afternoon, and she got right back to me on an extension date. And evidently, it's Welsh's highest priority to get an extension on the COVID funding attached as a rider to any bill he can find. Um, so, so what she wanted me to do, she wanted me to send a, a series of bullets of what, what couldn't get spent if they, we didn't get an extension. So I'll do that tomorrow morning. So um, there is, I mean, there is some hope. I don't know how cranky the Republicans are going to be in the Senate. But if I didn't know the way Congress works, I mean, they slip a, a one liner into some other bill that the Republicans want, it probably happens. But any anyway, event, that's where the extension uh, might happen. And we could then do the, the fiber to the premise with the money we have. Um, I think that's sort of my update. With the Business Development Committee's meeting Thursday night, um, we got, I put out an RFP for Canvas saying we got one official bid back and then a second possibility came in yesterday that, well, will the business development committee will look at it and we'll decide on Thursday night which way to, to proceed. But I'd like to get authorization to spend up to 20,000 bucks out of that money to do the canvassing. I'm not sure we're going to need it all, but I'd like to have that authorization. So if somebody would make a motion to that, or I can make a motion that the okay. business development committee. That sounds like a motion to me, David. Okay. Do you need some more language? Uh, so I... motion that the business development committee be authorized to spend up to twenty-five thousand or $20,000 of the CARES money for the canvassing effort. Yep, that's it. Okay. I'll second that. Dumb question. So... Do, we, do we have the money? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, hold on, hold on. So we don't have it in our checking account. Have, yes. So you really need to define this word have. So, <laughs> now, so do, do we have the cash flow currently available to pay this bill should we need to? Yes. Um, we will be presumably, once we do the fully executed grant agreement, which should be coming this week, probably tomorrow, actually I might even see it tonight, um, the fully executed grant agreement, then it starts that, you were talking about SAP, Chuck, this SAP-like process of getting the check in the <laughs> mailbox. Um, at which point, the, the moment that I see it in the mailbox, I am immediately in my car and driving over to the bank. That's just because, <laughs> I'm, be, because we will need to pay bills. But I think as long as the folks that we're dealing with understand that the the we have the money for it as long as you define have in a particular way. So, but we should we should be able to we should be able to um, meet our financial obligations. The um, the larger portion of that grant request was for the fiber to the premises stuff, which, as you might imagine, is a rather larger um, a rather lar larger outlay. Those we could not absorb on our own with what we currently have in the bank. Uh, the outreach communication, canvassing stuff, we can. Okay, so we have a motion and a second on David's uh, request for $20,000 for canvassing. The RFP went out. We have one and a half responses that will be chewed on on Thursday night. Any questions, feedback? Henry? Yeah, I just had a, a comment, which is um, that uh, I think that the um, each of the town delegates um, should be involved uh, with the canvassing activities and, and that the company that's selected um, be informed that they'll be coordinating or participating with the town delegates uh, uh, as they wish to participate. So in other words, I would like to be involved in the canvassing activity in my town, for example. So 
David and Tim, can you communicate that uh, we may have some delegates who are interested in participating to yeah. whoever we select? Excellent. So, and if any of you are interested in doing this, I'm sure we'll be sending out an email with contact information from the folks doing the canvassing, and then you can reach out to them directly. So if they're going and hitting Duxbury on some Tuesday, then you can know, you know, someone to talk to you about that then. Okay, um, anything else on the 20,000? Okay, hearing none. Uh, all those in favor of the canvassing outlay of $20,000, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed abstentions or folks wanting a roll call vote? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. You you have it, Business Development Committee. Anything else on grants or um, business development stuff, David? I can't think of anything right now. I, in terms of other grant opportunities, I haven't been paying attention to too many. Um, I'm happy that we have a new potential president, <laughs> that we may get some infrastructure money next year, um, which would be the best of all worlds. I don't know. That's about it for me. All right. Um, let's do Chuck and then Jeremy and Michael. Chuck, Jeremy, Michael. Uh, David, in, in the conversations around the Moortown line and, and you thinking that that may not be feasible, being cautiously optimistic, put it that way, right. uh, is the problem there that um, Wheatsfield Telecom sees it as risky to be able to complete the project by the, the time frame required? Correct. Okay. But they're more than willing to do it. <laughs> Is there anything uh, uh, I or fellow more townians can do to, to apply pressure on them that you think would be helpful, or should we let the process um, work work it work it out? Um, there, may, there may be a couple of things, but I think Michael probably knows that getting contractors out there to run fiber is not that easy right now, right, Michael? Um, well, this, we're talking about more town. Yep, mm -hmm. they they do their own work. They do their own yeah. work, so. So that would be the pressure point matter. where you get them to let you hire somebody else to run it, run the fiber. Because we would own the fiber. Right. I think, so, Chuck, what they did, uh, they did express that the make ready conditions were uh, much more involved than what they had hoped as far as uh, tree work and a lot of the lines being um, inaccessible or difficult and so that complicated the timeline in which they could uh, meet the expectations okay so you can get the more town chainsaw crew out and you guys can go trim along all the rights of way <laughs> Just Just probably can. <laughs> so so are that, well, that's like chainsaw helicopters that come through have you seen those oh wow that was incredible yeah um so uh, michael i do see you down there but uh, jeremy was yeah. first um, so, yeah, I was just going to ask, I mean, we, we've got these two projects. Um, it sounds like they're maybe not at the stage where we would approve them. Um, when do we think that is likely to happen? And are we going to have to have another meeting to vote on the terms that Tim is, is hammering out with Waitsfield and EC Fiber? You definitely have to have another meeting. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. In particular, with with the Roxbury stuff. So, um, the moment that we know that we can pull the trigger, um, I expect that I will hear from Tim and and EC Fiber, and we'll be able to move forward. And when I have that, I will I'll call a special meeting. It'll probably be reasonably short, but it'll be one of those twenty four hour notices. So I'll just make sure we get it done. Mm -hmm right quick and then they so they can hit the ground they can do their make ready work and start start rolling okay thanks sure all right so uh, there was a question or a, a comment in the chat so so the governing board adopts policies budgets and makes contract awards not committees committees don't sign contracts so um, i will typically sign the contract on behalf of the governing board but we have authorized 
we have authorized the committees as the governing board. We have delegated that authority to the committees to enter into and negotiate those contracts. So that's uh, something that we have done in the past. And we've uh, delegated that to individuals even in the past. Will the contracts um, come to the full board after, before they're signed? No, probably not. I, I, I will sign them. I will sign them as the, you know, as the CV fiber legal representative, but I'm going to leave it up to the, to the committees to sort that. Okay. All right. So I'm going to add Siobhan, I'm going to add you to the end. We have Michael. So I just want to circle back to um, deadline extensions of the CARES Act money. Um, a couple of things. One, David, did you get the impression that Rebecca Ellis needs to hear from as many people as possible about uh, items that may not be completable by the deadline? She would like and to then, know those, and I'm mean, sure you have some of your own, right? <laughs> I, I, I think I if, all, if all the CUDs yeah. would put their list of what was problematic to her, she might appreciate it. Okay. Um, so the, the the broader comment I want to make is that if this fabulous extension does come to pass, and I am not optimistic, but if it does, and it is of a significant period of time, it could really change um, what we prioritize, what CV Fiber prioritizes, what the department prioritizes. Um, projects that we've decided were just impossible to do suddenly become possible. And so we should be prepared to be flexible if the money is still available. So that's my comment. Okay, Siobhan. You're muted. Um, so if people were really interested in input on these contracts and things, they could attend the committee meetings, right? Yeah, okay. So, and Chuck will be announcing the committee meetings and stuff, right? Okie dokie. And similarly, business development, David will be announcing those meetings. And as a matter of fact, this meeting coming up on this Thursday, I expect that you're gonna do quite a lot of work on this subject in a couple of days. Okay, anything else? Um, anything yeah, else actually, on? Just, to, just yeah. to call something out there, um, we actually have some of the marketing stuff as a line item in the agenda on this Thursday's uh, business development committee meeting. So, you know, it's one of those scenarios where the lines are pretty gray here as to where responsibility of one committee stops and the other starts. So uh, I would encourage anyone who's interested in the marketing uh, facets to also attend this Thursday's business development committee. Sounds good. Uh, anything else on grants, funding, moving forward? Um, t Tim, I have a quick question for you. The additional, that additional source of funding from USDA rural development, it, did you get to any, you get any sense of whether that look, makes sense for us to go after in terms of um, supplementing the infrastructure, like the Vita loan and the other stuff that we're looking at doing next year? It, you know, it could be a fit. The, the big thing is, you know, coming up with a contiguous area and then they do have some funky criteria as far as free service um, for certain uh, community spaces for up to three years that you have to provide. The other is anywhere within your area, if they find um, any service higher than, than uh, 10, um, they don't approve it and they come out and field check things prior. So it, it's um, something to be mindful of when you're drawing those those areas. It's probably similar to, to drawing the, the voting zone. So um, it's got a few, you know, funky, um, but it is, uh, you know, it is a grant that uh, could fit based on uh, some of the, some of the uh, um, money that, that would be available. 
Um, all right, Jeremy. I mean, I guess one thing that occurs to me is what would happen if we applied for an area and then say wireless came in and in the meantime built there and serve that area at faster than 10 would we then get in trouble for something that was not present maybe even when we were doing the construction yeah i don't i didn't get into that much detail i, I don't okay. know i mean that you know that it has to be submitted by the end of this year and then they wouldn't make decisions until probably second quarter of next year so clearly things could transpire in there that are outside of our control so i i don't know the answer to that um i didn't ask that to, to them all right okay. uh, michael you have some experience with us usda yeah. grants how would that work with <laughs> My experience with them and others is that they base their decisions on the conditions at the time of the um, offering of the, the funding and not the time that you commence doing the work so that the rules are established in advance and then you stick to those. And if someone builds something afterwards, so be it. It doesn't affect the grant. And those are the nominal conditions? Not the on the no. ground actual conditions. <laughs> Given that I mean, I'm 25. No, no, no it's zero, never zero. nominal. Never that way. It's 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 the conditions that they list in their rules, which are based on whatever fictions they're on at the moment. <laughs> okay, Henry. I I have to ask my question. I always ask and know that there's chance that I, no one's going to be able to say anything, but um, RDOF and can you say whether or not we bid on anything? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's a there's an extended there's an extended period of time where that silent rule uh, is is maintained. So we'll you know, we'll we'll all hear about how everything shook out when everybody can hear about it. And when is that? Just so I I won't bother you again. Michael, do you remember the the date of that? There is there is no date. The date the 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 occasion will be thirty days after the close of the auction, and the long form applications are due due to be submitted. But we don't know what the date of the close of the article will be, so we can't have a date yet. Okay. I think in the last meeting you said that could be, you know, January or February of next year. Is that correct? Possibly. I, I did, mean, we don't know. I did obviously. say that, and I think that I I have learned since that it will be sooner than that, um, based on the okay. schedule the article is, is proceeding at. So probably it would be the end of December, early January, or something like that, when the quiet period would end. Okay. Okay. Thanks for con Thank thanks you. for continuing to ask that, Henry. It's uh, it's <laughs> good to know. I'll, All I'll right. Be in the December next time. <laughs> we probably want to be, wait till the January meeting, unless we have a last minute, you know, December nineteenth meeting or something, before we have to. <laughs> You know, <laughs> pour the pot of gold back into the state pot. Um, all right. Anything else on grant, uh, grant or other funding? So Tim said he's uh, working on the Vita stuff. Um, the Department of Public Service is not even, uh, as I understand, has not finalized the process for requesting the matching funds yet. But they they know that we're all kind of ready to to get that, and it's going to be. It's looking like that's going to be right around the beginning of the year. Okay, um, I think that brings us to the end of our agenda. I'm just going to go in order of the video that I see here for roundtable. Um, Andy? I'm good. Thank you. Frank? I'm good. Thanks, Frank. Siobhan? I'm fine. Thanks.
Uh, Greg. Uh, thank you, David, for all the work and Jeremy on that application. It's great. We won something. <laughs> now we got to spend it. Jeremy. Oh, I'm Jeremy sorry. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little distracted. I just wanted to thank uh, Michael specifically for helping me convince the town of Plainfield to get this public router installed so that I can actually be on this meeting right now. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise I, I wouldn't be able to do it with my home connection. You know, um, you know, my wife's got a whole bunch of stuff going on and there's not enough bandwidth. So anyway, thanks, Michael. Appreciate it. <laughs> Story of our lives, right? David, you're up next. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I'm good. All right, Josh. I'm all set. Thank you. All right, Katharina. Uh, I'm all set. Thanks. All right, Ray. Yeah, my question in the chat room: Is there a funding bucket for a project manager in 2021? Is there a process for extending TIM or issuing RFP? What are we going to do? Uh, we really only have a couple of meetings between now and the end of the year. Uh, what's in the pipeline for funding? And this is probably not a question you can answer now, but it's something we need to address soon. So there is no funding for 2021. If it gets extended, then then we may have options. Um, otherwise, we're looking at the project funds for the, the VITA loan and the matching funds for <laughs> a, a person to act in a similar manner as yeah, uh, as Tim with that project to essentially drive that project general contractor sort of sort of person. Um, is there a process for extending Tim or issuing an RFP? Sure, let's make it up. I mean, it's like any other contract that we might um, that we might engage in or extend. It's something that's going to come before the governing board and that we have to decide how to go how to go from here. How's that right? That's it for me. All right, thanks, right. Uh, Jerry. Hey, I just want to give kudos to Jeremy. Uh, you know, doing this out of your car, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you 110%. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> All right. Well, I got to get it done somehow, right? <laughs> All right, Chuck. You heard my voice enough. Thank you. All right, Tom. Yeah, uh, thanks everybody for all your work. I wish I could do more to help, but I really appreciate all the work you guys do. All right, Tim? Uh, I'm good. Okay, John Russell? And you muted yourself. We didn't hear if you said something. So if you have something to add, Please feel free to unmute and go from there. Michael? Um, Jerry made my comment. I was going to say that I really appreciate Jeremy working from the subway. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm kind of used to it. I, I used oh, to do a consulting from my car. So, yeah. Sorry, what was that? Nothing. Nothing. Just ha hang okay. on to that strap so you don't fall down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> the oh shit handle. <laughs> All right, Henry. Um, I, I I really appreciate uh, you guys working all those iterations on getting the grant in, and uh, thanks very much for that. And I just wanted to let you know that I'm going in for rotator cuff surgery uh in a couple weeks and so i may be offline for a while i'm going to have my um alternate uh try to start attending the meetings um but um for day before thanksgiving uh, i'm having the surgery so oh no i'll get well soon hope you recover quick thank you yeah yeah here's yeah, to a, a smooth and uneventful surgery good luck Lowry? I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you for all your work. Sure. Um, so I, I wanted to uh, put my thanks out there to the folks at the Department of Public Service for putting in an insane number of hours. And even though it was irritating with all of the changes 
that they were asking us to do. I can't imagine what it was looking like, you know, with them juggling, you know, however many of these things and saying, nope, you got to do this the Fed's way. And it's like, we just want to get this done. We just want to do our jobs. But they were uh, on top of it and responding to emails at bizarre times and working late, late into the night. So they're not here to hear this, but I just wanted to uh, to put it out there thanking Rob and Clay and that whole team for moving this together and helping us to get to get at these funds. And with that, um, I will declare us adjourned at 7:10 p.m. And it was it was early. I was uh, I'm like a prophet, right? I got my my prophet beard going on. I was just gonna say it's the beard. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Yeah. See you later, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night, evening. everybody. Bye. Thank you.